Howdy. My name is Dustin Kirkland, and I have the privilege here to demonstrate some amazing work by my colleagues at Canonical. A few weeks ago, we introduced a new flavor of Ubuntu that we call Snappy, an atomically updated operating system. And we showed how to launch, update, roll back, and install apps in cloud instances of Snappy Ubuntu, running in Amazon EC2, Microsoft Azure, and Google Compute Engine public clouds. And now, we're showing how that same snappy Ubuntu experience is the perfect operating system for today's explosion of smart devices that some people are calling the Internet of Things. We think you'll love snappy on your smart devices for many of the same reasons that there are already millions of Ubuntu machine instances and hundreds of public and private clouds, as well as the millions of your own Ubuntu desktops, tablets, and phones. Let's take a look. Our target hardware for this snappy Ubuntu demo is the BeagleBone Black, an inexpensive open platform for hardware and software developers. I paid about $55 for the board and $8 for a USB to TTL serial cable. The board itself is about the size of a credit card. It has a 1 GHz ARM Cortex-A8 processor, 512 megs of RAM, and onboard Ethernet. While well, Snappy Ubuntu will run on most any ARM HF or AMD64 hardware, including the Intel Nook, the BeagleBone is perhaps the most developer-friendly solution. Now we're going to build a Snappy Ubuntu image to run on our device. Soon we'll publish a library of Snappy Ubuntu Im images for many popular devices that you'll just simply download from a web page. But for this demo, we're going to roll our own using the tool Ubuntu Device Flash. I'm going to run this command where we are using Ubuntu Device Flash to create an Ubuntu core image of size 3 gigabytes output to a file called mysnappy.img. We're using the channel Ubuntu core slash develop proposed and building an image that works on generic ARM HF devices, uh, specifically the platform being the, the BeagleBone Black. We've added the developer mode flag and we'll see why in just a minute. This takes about 30 seconds, at the end of which we have a 3 gigabyte image called mysnappy.img that we can now disk dump DD to uh, a, a block device. So I'm going to run disk dump against a block device. This block device is actually a micro SD card that, uh, that fits into the micro SD card slot on the BeagleBone. And let's see, let's see that. Next, we're going to hook up the hardware that is the BeagleBone. First, we need to insert the micro SD card that we've just written the Ubuntu Snappy image. This is a 4 gig micro SD card. It fits right in there like that, and uh, it clicks. Um, next, we'll insert a network cable. I've got this plugged into my switch here. It'll draw a DHCP IP address off of that. Next, we'll need the USB debug cable. This is how we'll actually get a console on the machine for the very first time. Eventually, we'll be able to SSH into it. Uh, the black wire will go onto pin 1. The green wire, receive, will go into pin 4. And the white wire, transmit, will go into pin 5. You can leave the red wire unconnected. It's, we're not going to use that for anything. Lastly, we need to give it power. Uh, you can either use the 5 volt uh, DC plug here or actually just um, a mini USB cable. I'm going to use the mini USB cable. Now we'll plug both of these USB cables into our laptop. Should see some LED activity here in just a second as soon as we power it on. Okay, at this point we're ready for our first boot of Snappy. So let's attach to the, the USB cable, the USB serial cable, where we're going to see our console. So here I'm going to run a sudo screen command. And at this point we're waiting for traffic on that that USB serial console. I'm going to plug in the BeagleBone now, give it power, and if you watch very closely, you'll see uh, U-Boot, sort of our, our bootloader, so to speak. Uh, you can see 
that we're booting the snappy image. I can see our, our AB partitions now. Uh, we loaded the Ubuntu kernel and now the Ubuntu user space. You can see we're booting using systemd here. We're mounting using the snappy file system structure where the, the, the root partition is read only and the places where we need read write space where are mounted as separate partitions. Starting the various services and now we're at a login prompt. I'm actually going to wait just a second here uh, because something cool is about to happen. Um, and that includes cloud init. Snappy images actually include cloud init, which is our uh, init system we use for Ubuntu in the cloud that's able to fetch information, a particular information that gives machines in the cloud a personality. Sometimes we call it DNA. Uh, we're actually using the same process here on Snappy uh, for devices. Um, I can see that I have uh, drawn an IP address against my router. Uh, we'll use that in just a second. We should be able to actually SSH into this system in addition to being able to talk to it over the, the serial console. Obviously we'll unplug the, the console at some point once we've got the system set up the way we want it. I think we're good now. So we can log in. Default username and password in the developer mode is Ubuntu and Ubuntu. And we're given this message that, remember there is no apt get, there is snappy. So we can run snappy help and see the things we can do. List information such as the information and versions we could update and roll back, install and uninstall packages at this point. Uh, but here we can see that we run snappy info and I see that we're running Ubuntu core. We've actually got the WebDM framework installed. And we'll see what that does in just a second. But let's, uh, let's move out of here actually and try SSHing into this system. So if I SSH into Ubuntu at 10.0.0.105, which was the IP address I saw on that system, I'm logged directly in. And I can see this is my ARM v7 Beagle board. I can see the, the interesting file system structure that Snappy brings. Uh, creating that image myself Actually, the Ubuntu device flash used the public, my public SSH key from my home directory and inserted it into this image, so I was able to SSH directly, directly in. At this point, we can see we've got networking up, um, and you know, for all practical purposes, this is a, a, a very powerful Ubuntu system. So when we ran the snappy info command a minute ago, we saw something interesting, and that's this framework called w, uh, Web w, uh, WebDM that's installed. Uh, let me actually show you what that is. We can actually point a web browser at this device on the service port 8080. And we're actually running a snappy service here on the system. Eventually, we'll be able to install apps just like you would apt get install apps on your Ubuntu desktop or laptop or, or server. You, you could actually search the store for apps and install it on your device. There'll also be exposed configuration information so that you can remotely configure the device simply through a web browser rather than on a command line or a, a, a USB serial console. Hey, how cool is that? Snappy Ubuntu running on devices. Now I've spent a lot of time and money recently geeking out over my Nest, Dropcam, Netatmo, Wemo, light switches. I've been playing with their APIs and hooking them up to things like uh, if this then that. But I'm really excited about a world where those types of devices are as accessible to me as my Ubuntu servers and desktops. And from what I've shown you here with this, I think we can safely say that we've blown right past the, the year of the Linux desktop and we're already in the year of the Linux countertop. I'm looking forward to it.